Good evening, everybody. My name is Angelo Capasso. I am now here working as a chairman for this webinar on the Video Art Award that we are giving through the Centro di Sarro. This is an international art prize, and this is um, thanks to the Pretoria uh, Embassy, Italian Embassy. Now we will go through all the um, intervention in this conference, and I will add the word to the ambassador, Paolo Cuculi, now that is present here to speak about, about this interesting prize that we are, that has been designed by the Pretoria administration. Grazie, professore. Good afternoon to all our friends and followers in South Africa and in Italy. I'm very pleased to introduce this webinar uh, to celebrate together the 17th edition of Contemporary Art Day, promoted every year by the Association of Italian Contemporary Art Museums. Uh, today, we will hear about the artistic production of moving images based on the experience of the Video Arts Awards and its call for the 2022 edition. Uh, Video Art Awards, as you may know, we, and its jury will shortlist 10 artists, five from Italy and five from South Africa, who will participate to a collective exhibition to be held in both countries. And the winner of each group will be awarded a trip to one of the two countries, hopefully, if the health and sanitary situation will allow it. But let's keep optimistic for this afternoon. Uh, it's such a critic juncture uh, that the persisting of COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, cause, uh, it, I believe it is important to insist on the need to keep alive and nurture those threads that enrich creativity and uh, at the same time uh, offer a new opportunity to promote and give visibility to the works that uh, the VAA has selected in the editions of 2018 and 2019. Uh, the Video Art Awards uh, is organized, as Professor Capasso said, by the Centro Luigi Di Sarro in cooperation with the Italian Cultural Institute in Pretoria. Uh, the third edition of the VAA includes a new prestigious partner, the Experimental Photography Festival Grenze Arsenali Fotografici of Verona. I'm very pleased to welcome them on our event uh, that we lost the selection of the finalists and of the winning artists. The works of the 20 artists who have been involved in the previous editions are visible in the video section of our homepage today. Uh, needless to say, I personally and on behalf of the Italian Embassy praise this initiative that helps us to strengthen the cultural bridges between Italy and South Africa, as well as enhancing the cultural dialogue between uh, our two countries. Finally, I wish to thank uh, Professor Capasso for moderating this debate tonight, Alessandra Atti Di Sarro, the Artistic Director of the Centro Luigi Di Sarro, uh, Professor Fazzi, the Director of the Italian Cultural Institute, uh, Simone Azzoni, the Artistic Director of the Grenze Festival, the jury who will have the task to select the finalists and winners of the VAA uh, this next year, and all the Italian and South African artists who will enter the contest. Thank you so much for the, your attention and I look forward to listening to your important and interesting contributions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. This is a, a very interesting and important words the, the Ambassador said. In fact, it is very important, this relationship between, between two countries so far away, one from the other, but also because they are far from 
far away culturally. We, so, so we see the fact that how video art has become probably the most international language used by artists. So it's outside the European tradition. It's a worldwide tradition. And uh, I think it's very interesting, the idea of design and, and our work that relates it's Italy with South Africa. And I thank very much Alessandra Atti di Saro, which I introduce now to speak and tell us about the prize for a short time. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm here to represent the Centro Luigi di Sarro, which is uh, the organization that promotes the video art awards. And I want to really say thank you to all those who are participating in this meeting. And first of all, I have to thank the Italian ambassador, Paolo Cuculli, for his support to our project. Then behind the scenes, I have to thank the entire staff of the Istituto Italiano di Cultura di Pretoria, Directed, directed by Matteo Fazzi, who agreed to share a new piece of road with us. Yes, because this event uh, will be an opportunity for us to launch, as the ambassador says, uh, the call for the third edition of our Video Art Awards. So at the end of this session, uh, the new call for participa participation will be posted online on this page. Certainly, uh, the period is not the most peaceful and the persistence of the pandemic continues to keep us in suspense on the possibility of moving and traveling, but we want to be optimistic. Yes, as the ambassador says before, we want to believe that everything will be fine. Therefore, our VAA must return to unfold after one year stop uh, with all the attentions and the alternative plans to adequately reward the new selected video artworks. In the meantime, the platform we have created, and for that I have to mention Simone Zanetti and the Rainmaker Cafe team who made a huge technical work to make this possible. The platform, I was saying, would be a new occasion to share and promote the video artworks selected by the previous edition of VAA, and we hope that from now on, this will become the home of this exchange project for the next editions. On the platform, you can find the archive of the two past editions. On the platform tomorrow, you will find the record of this webinar. On the platform, you will find all information for new calls and future events related to the video afterwards. Let me say something now about the idea behind this project. Centro Luigi di Sarro, which is a not-for-profit cultural organization based in Rome and named on Luigi di Sarro, my uncle, who was a multidisciplinary artist with a deeply experimental mindset, started to operate between Italy and South Africa a long time ago in 2009 with exchange projects which later became residencies for artists, mostly young artists. Thanks to the support of our Ministry of Foreign Affairs up to now, we have given around 20 young artists the opportunity to meet and work between Italy and South Africa with the, the Art, Art Residency Project, ARP. And 20 other artists have been benefited from the promotion and prizes of this VAA uh, project. All of them are seeds for a better future. All of them will keep an experience for life. All of them for, for my great networks of dialogue between Italy and South Africa, between Europe and Africa. Art is in a great need of knowledge and experience, but art is also in a great need of dialogue. Nothing can be created by being closed and alone. This is the idea that Luigi Di Sarro had of art and life, and this is what we try to carry out in his name. In this regard, I'm pleased to tell you something about the previous edition of VAA, in particular, how we start in uh, 2018. We had to invent the prize, the rules, decide how to organize the selection and subsequent promotion of the works. We wanted it to be a prize for artistic quality, first of all, but also, in fact, an opportunity for dialogue. For this reason, we decided to hold the promotional event and the award ceremony in a completely unusual place, a community center in a neighborhood of the, on the outskirts of Cape Town. You are viewing the images of this emotional exhibition. On the other hand, 
for the Italian side, we decided to bring video into a short film festival, Porto Lovere, on the Iseo Lake in Italy, another unusual place for works that were not born for large screen projection. But the effect was very interesting. And so for the subsequent edition, also in South Africa, we held the event in a cinema at the historic Cinema Labia in Cape Town. We promise to invent something new for the next edition. I can only anticipate that the South African city involved for the exchange in the third edition will be Johannesburg. And the Italian partner this year, but the ambassador will <laughs> unfold this, uh, this news, is the Experimental Photography Festival Grenzi Arsenal Photographic. After the dialogue with cinema, we will try to put video art in dialogue with the experimental photography, and we will see. The theme of the new call will be contemporaneity, which is not only the simple present time, but is also the time we share all together, or the time which is eternal or transient, finite or infinite, or how can I say, what lies in the middle between past time and future time, the point is that the art world is engaged in a complex analysis of what contemporary can exactly mean, what and when is possible to talk of contemporary. But the video art is the medium of contemporaneity for excellence. So we'll see what the artist has to say about it. Anyway, my time is finished. So I thank everyone again for being here with us today. And I pass the word to Professor Angelo Capasso, who will guide you in the webinar session. Enjoy it. Thank, thanks very much, Alessandra. Now we go through the works of the artist. And uh, so we get to know the finalists. We get to know the work of the artist. Uh, I give some words about the beginning of We Video Art, although we can even we can say that there is a story of video art rather than history of video art because it's an history on progress. So it's very difficult to tell what are the real origins of video art. I mean, it's not difficult, but books generally give some hints about this origin. So, but the beginning of video art is namely what it extension of photography, as Alexandra was saying. So. It's interesting this relationship that the video art begins and then photography comes afterwards, probably in the giving more evidence and extending the, the, the work on, on images that have been done by artists. You, you are seeing now through my, why I speak some words about the origins of video, video art. This is a Rhythmus 21 or Rhythm, Rhythmus 21. It's a first video by uh, an artist that probably initiated the, the, the experiences of our videos, which is Hans Richter. Hans Richter, before becoming a video artist, was a futurist artist. In actually, probably in the scene, the manifest of cinema that uh, was uh, written by the futurist, there was already uh, an hint to, to, to video art. But probably, but it's only in the 20s, after the First World War, that we see those experiments. And this is a, a very interesting experiment because as you see, uh, generally this is called absolute cinema or cubist cinema or surrealist cinema. But cubist is very important here because, and that is cinema is very important because what was the, the main thing about this video is the surprise, uh, the epiphany of the images they appear on a wall, because you, you should imagine the fact that how it works at, at the beginning to see the images finally moving. The idea of moving images uh, was not only related to the fact that it was, the video could do a story, so a story is uh, an extension of, of literature. Here, the, the researches by artists were mainly related to the form, to their form. This is another experiment. This is an experiment made by Marcel Duchamp, which is called, this, the title is Anemic, Anemic Cinema. So it's the anemic cinema. It's a cinema without blood, which means because generally we consider the blood of cinema, the story actually, uh, the, the fiction, the narration. Here, on the other, uh, Duchamp works with a, a kind of sculptures like 
images. In fact, these are the rotor relief. They are, these are part of his work. These rotor reliefs is done even physically as sculptures. But these are hypnotizing images. These are, of, of course, the images that were being used by Freud before psychoanalysis, of course, which he alternates with his uh, kind of puns, a uh, game of words that also have a uh, um, mesmering uh, effect. So the artists at that time were already measuring the effect of video on the spectators, on the spectator's glance. And in this case, you see the relationship with surrealist music um, um, film is very strict because of course, uh, uh, psychoanalysis was the main uh, subject for surrealists and it is for Duchamp too. In fact, we see here an experiment that's been made by some of them, probably this is the most known video uh, amongst the three. It is uh, Le Chien Andalou by uh, Salvador Dali uh, Buñuel. And in fact, this is a, a different way of, of telling a story. Dali considered video as a, a painting in movement. In fact, what was interesting for those all those artists in the first avant-garde was the possibility of adding movement to a painting. But most of all, also, what was very important was video, video editing. The fact that something that was impossible to see in reality could happen in video. So this is also a very important aspect of video. In fact, those aspects, even the, the, the scene we've seen before is um, interesting and it's possible only in movie. This video, Buñuel reminds that it started because from two dreams. Dali dreamt about some insects in his hands and he dreamt about his cat, this cat high. So there, there is no scenario, there's no story, but just two, these two elements that give a, a possibility of imagine and producing the video as a film, as a, also a form of psychoanalysis. So the relationship with our psychoanalysis is very important throughout the years. Hans Richter did a, a, a film in 1942, which titled Dreams of Money Can Buy, which talks also about psychoanalysis. Now we go to more specific and contemporary uh, aspects of video with Laura, and I introduce Laura Vincenti, who is uh, the director of the Cape Town Affair, and she will probably tell us uh, more about what video, how video is distributed, and how can video become part of collection? Because of course, it's an ephemeral work of form of art, and it, it, the most difficulties are probably those of collecting video art. So I leave, I leave the word to Laura Vincenti, introduce and thank her for her introduction to, to this subject. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you to the ambassador of Italy in South Africa and to Alessandra for having invited me to this um, very interesting conversation. Uh, so I would be short because I know that we are a lot of people and we have to give uh, ground to the Q&A, um, but I want to give you just a very quick insight of what is the fair in its history over almost 10 years. Um, the Investor Cape Town Art Fair is owned by Fera Milano. Uh, it started in 2013 as a very local fair and its growth has been exponentially enormous over the years, becoming the largest and most important international art fair in the continent. Um, the fair has been rated in 2019 as the second young fair in the world, second to Shanghai, in terms of developing programs and fast growth, in terms of number of galleries, collectors, and sales. That is very important to, to point out on sales. Uh, the last edition, we have we've been lucky enough to host the the last edition in 2020 in February before the world changed. Um, we had more than a hundred exhibitors and uh, a lot of collectors from all over the world, uh, from United States to Europe, to all the continent, to Asia. 
and we had um, more than 22,000 visitors over four days. Okay, to narrow down uh, the topic, because our focus is uh, talking about video art and the way um, it's set up in an art event. I mean, it's without doubt at the forefront of the contemporary art. It has in a way changed the structure of how art is viewed and collected. Just as an example, in 2018, the eight shortlisted artists for the Turner Prize, that is a very important prize in the art world, were all, um, were all video arts artists. So it means, it means a lot. It means that video art is now collectible. It's not just a niche uh, for a niche market, but is, I mean, has been showed into museums and institution all over the world. Um, video art has expanded its reach over the last, I would say five to eight years by shifting from, a, as I was said, from a very niche and experimental media of representation into museum and institutions to a different media uh, used in fairs and exhibitions, broadening the accessibility to the audience and their engagement. Uh, it was very popular uh, in, at the beginning of the 21st century uh, to um, talk about video rooms and black boxes. So that was exactly to go to a more technical um, topic, the way uh, we video arts uh, works we were installed and were sh showcased to the public. Um, so it was a very confined and very defined space. Uh, in the shift, there, there has been a very big, a massive move towards, uh, I would say, 2010, 2011, to the black box, so a confined, a very confined spaces, to projection on screens, projections on walls, projections on buildings. And of course, it, it means a lot because it means that from a very uh, niche way of looking at a video artworks, it, it has become more engaging and more accessible to a, a broader audience because from the inside of the space, it's go outside. As you know, um, space is in an art fair is a priority. And of course, the shaping of it creates or destroys uh, physical barriers. The fruition of a video artworks is now the same as a painting or as a sculpture, even more as you can fully experience the work by looking at that and by hearing. So it's a more, I would say, holistic experience. Um, the future of art events uh, will see a growing of numbers of artists working with video art because, um, I mean, video art is very accessible. It's, be, it's easy to transport and it can be adapted uh, into different contexts. And also the installation is, is very easy when it comes to exhibitions or art fairs. We are now in a digital age and the world has changed uh, also as a consequence of the pandemic. The video art works have become an extremely popular at the fairs and the future will maybe see even more integration between video art and traditional media. I, I really believe in connections between human beings and in culture and interchanging. And uh, I think video artworks um, are an exceptional media to facilitate this process. Okay, thank you very much because it, it is very, this was a very interesting intervention because uh, we 
focused on the um, possibility of saying the video art is probably the most dynamic, uh, even in this area of pandemic, probably the, the idea of sharing videos and the, in bytes, which are what produces video today, what I've shown before were films, in fact, now we have bytes. And it's very interesting, the fact that even the, the fact of producing spaces is what belongs to video art. And now, of course, any one of you who wants to give, have, um, make a question to any of the, co the components of the, uh, the people that are speaking today can do it through the chat. So can send me a chat, a message through the chat. We'll see some three videos now which has been sent uh, as a witness for this uh, uh, occasion. This, uh, the, the artists are Olivio, Olivia Bota, the duo Citron Lunardi and Michela Tobiolo. In 2019, I had the privilege of showing my video, Silence Bleeding, alongside four other South African artists and five Italian artists as part of the International Video Art Awards. Silence Bleeding deals with the issues surrounding menstrual health. According to a paper published in the Menstrual Health Management in East and Southern Africa, a review paper, young female students are absent from school during their cycle. In some cases, the social shame and embarrassment attached to menstruation results in leaving school at a young age, inevitably compromising their potential and future. The Video Art Awards allowed me to speak about this pressing issue to a broader audience. The first screening and award ceremony took place at the Labia Theatre in Cape Town, and then later in the same year, the second screening took place at the Academia Tandini in Italy. Having been part of the Video Art Awards allowed me to meet many of the artists as well as the organisers of the event. I believe that building a strong network of fellow artists and art practitioners is fundamental for any artist, and this award has definitely allowed for that to happen. Hello everybody, I am Selena Citron. Hi, I am Luca Lunardi, we are Citron Lunardi. We are honoured to have been part of the second edition of uh, with our video Backup My Memories. Our artistic project, Citron Lunardi, explores the separation between human and the non-human, focusing on the concept of fluidity through biology, technology and art. We ask ourselves a question about who we will be in the future and if something of us will remain. For example, the fear of losing our memories. Back up my memories, our video, is about the fear of losing memory and therefore of dying. Recovering memories means longing for immortality. So the fear of losing memories will become the fear of losing data. In our practice, we use technology as an instrument to reconnect the human experience with the natural world, on if in design, audiovisual art and scientific research. So, our artworks become a hybrid that mixes many different elements sculpture, video, 3D print, performance and photogrammetry. A contamination that redraws the boundaries between the human and the post-human, the analogical and the digital, the artificial and the natural. In our artworks we are thinking stories that consider critically about the sorts of technological developments and the contemporary concerns related to scientific innovation. For example, Backup My Memories is a reflection on the discouraging perspective offered by cryopreservation. In our vision of the future, we reflect on the creation of hybrid landscape from a post-anthropocentric view, exploring a new symbiotic relationship with other living and non-living matters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Okay, now we have three more artists. Now we were we're, we're talking about the finalists of the present VA award. And those artists are the artists are Jabu Nadia Newman, Luca Coclite, and Nicolo Mazzini. We will have Nicolo Mazzini with uh, with us here speaking and two videos, one by Jabu Nadia Newman and the other by Luca Coclite. So we'll see those two, two videos first and then we will speak with Nicolo Mazzini, who is present, and I see his name here in the chat. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Jabu Nadia Newman, and I was the winner of the Video Art Prize in 2019. Um, my work is usually based on intersectional feminism and looking at relationships between women and women of color. Um, my work is very intuitive, experimental, and personal. I'm usually telling stories that come from myself, my friends, my family, all the women that are all around me. Um, I'm from South Africa, and I was one of the South African participants in 2019. I think that the award and the prize is really valuable and interesting for anyone who's applying. You get to really connect with the um, Italian winner of the prize and um, build friendships for life and get to see lots of different video art that exists um, in South Africa and Italy. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for any video artist who's looking at what possibilities there are to either screen or um, exhibit your film in other countries as well as see what is out there. Um, yes, so thank you so much and please do apply. Salve a tutti, grazie per l'invito. Io sono Luca Coplite, sono nato in un piccolo paese del sud Italia, a qualche chilometro dal capo di Leuca, nella punta estrema della regione Puglia quindi il tacco d'Italia, dove attualmente vivo e lavoro come artista multimediale. Da diversi anni nutro un certo interesse per quello che è lo studio della rappresentazione del paesaggio nelle sue diverse sfaccettature. Eh, le mie opere audiovisive si ispirano principalmente alla sperimentazione, ai documentari, alla videoarte degli anni 60 e 70. Eh, sono capitoli di un lungo flusso di coscienza, lavoro continuo tra memoria e futuro, dove infrangendo le regole della visione tradizionale diciamo, cinematografica, eh, servendomi materiali di archivio principalmente del fan footage, ma di video, di fotografie e di elaborazione digitale, eh, cerco di creare dei quadri in movimento, eh, dei video letterari, come amo definirli, sospesi tra eh, la visione e il ricordo. Il mio approfondimento verte soprattutto sulla riflessione che mette al centro le interferenze tra paesaggio naturale e paesaggio artificiale, passando per lo studio dell'architettura in particolar modo del concetto di abitare, di quelli che sono i territori in trasformazione, luoghi come quello in cui vivo, dove la crisi di identità e il conflitto, il divario tra realtà virtuale e esperienza reale diventa sempre più ampio. Per quanto riguarda la distinzione della mia ricerca, spesso ricorro a display che eh, hanno a che fare con differenti linguaggi visivi, predilico ovviamente la fotografia, il video, ma anche il disegno. Eh, creo delle immagini improvvise che poi organizzo all'interno di diari. Questi diari poi successivamente vengono riletti con un occhio distaccato, con un occhio quasi di uno sconosciuto e attraverso l'elaborazione digitale poi compongo e configuro delle installazioni che si relazionano con l'ambiente ospitante. Gli output installativi per me sono estremamente importanti, in quanto hanno una forte carica contemplativa. Per me l'arte è soprattutto il risultato mistico di un processo ritualistico, quindi di un uh, rituale. Solitary Gardens, che è stato premiato al Video Art Award, un po' ripercorre quello che ho detto finora. I tre capitoli che lo compongono eh, ci raccontano di una realtà che da edenica diventa illusoria. I, 
la solitudine nei giardini d'inverno, le hall degli hotel, le hall dei centri commerciali, l'artificiosità del Prospect Park di Brooklyn, eh, piuttosto che dei diorami di, dei musei della scienza eh, naturale, o fino al decadimento degli oggetti ritrovati lungo la spiaggia che si chiama Dead Horse Space, conosciuta ai più, ricoperta interamente da affetti personali di oggetti che provengono dalle case di velte incalzate dal modernamento di Manhattan, sono appunto la sommatoria tra natura e artificio. Qui l'idea di giardino come metafora dell'uomo che aspira alla felicità, al raggiungimento della perfezione, diventa il contenitore di una condizione umana solitaria e individuale, tra il mondo del visibile e il mondo dell'invisibile. Ringrazio infinitamente a Bart Residence e il Centro Luigi di Sarro per avermi dato a suo tempo la possibilità di raggiungere Cape Town attraverso questo premio, che consiste appunto in una breve residenza, in un periodo di residenza in Sudafrica. Per me opportunità come queste che mh, favoriscono lo scambio e la mobilità degli artisti mettendo in relazione alla propria ricerca autoriale con geografie diverse sono estremamente importanti e necessarie. Grazie a tutti e a presto. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Nicola Mazzini. Uh, I'm the Italian winner of the second edition of the Via Video Art Awards 2019. Um uh, within the support of the Centro Luigi di Sarro I had opportunity of spending uh, Um, an experience uh, in, the, in the city of Cape Town while uh, actually getting to know the winners of the, the South African, the, the winner of the South African edition and the finalists uh, in which the work was uh, exhibited at uh, the Labia Theater of Cape Town. The experience itself was uh, very fruitful um, despite, as Jabu mentioned, uh, despite like a long life, a life friendship that developed within uh, our uh, encounterings. Also, I had opportunity of uh, connecting with the art scene of Cape Town, uh, which later on evolved in uh, collaboration with exhibition or uh, further materials for my researches. And later on as well, I had the opportunity of like joining Jabu when uh, uh, she came to visit uh, us in, uh, in Italy during uh, Cortolovere. So it was a, a beautiful exchange in between like the two continents and even, like, even with like Olivia and all the others, we built up a strong uh, bond. So because of that, I'm very thankful for the full experience. I do work as a multidisciplinary artist and, uh, and a researcher. I'm actually currently in Argentina uh, developing uh, a trajectory, a uh, work trajectory that spreads out around different uh, territorial uh, territories and uh, thematics. I can actually send in the chat a link towards it. My work uh, is focused in the interplay of uh, the represented and the representable, and I do like to play with different uh, techniques and different mediums in order to, um, to find the best way to resolve a specific topic or a specific research, a specific narration within the context and the topics I'm uh, involving myself with. So uh, when it comes to video art, as, uh, as uh, our uh, moderator was explaining before, it's quite powerful in a way that allows uh, a dialogue of uh, Of multi, a multi-layered narrative between mediums and types of resolution. For instance, the work uh, that I presented for uh, as a winner for uh, the second edition of VIAD Awards was actually uh, a rotoscope uh, video animation of uh, a mixture of films. I realized and found footages that later on was processed through different medias and. Uh, And it turned Nicola, out can, I, can I ask you a question? I take advantage of the yeah. fact that you are present here with us and I can, mm -hmm. can I ask you a question. When you say you are a multidisciplinary artist, do you also do painting and sculptures or do you do? You do. So you, you still, 
And when you think about your videos, when you work on videos, do you think that painting and sculptures are part of those mm, uh, or your videos, um, not only part of the, of the content, but in the way you do your researches, by meaning that they are, they are only contemporary or they have a different role, each, each form of art? I feel that everything is intertwined. Uh, like I don't like to to see uh, any sort of medium or any sort of position, any sort of uh, nationality, territoriality, or whatever else we want to call it, as a, a, a closed box of uh, which is isolated from crossbreeding or uh, whatever other type of influences. So when it comes to mediums. Uh, or when it comes to, for instance, uh, um, the utilization of uh, technology within the implementation or the evolution that uh, technology uh, applied to, for instance, paintings or sculpture. For me, it's, it's, a, it's a resource that extends the possibilities. I don't see it as a limit or as a confinement. So when I say that I'm a multidisciplinary artist, it's exactly as you mentioned. In, when I'm uh, confronted with a topic or an idea or uh, a territory in which I want to resolve a specific type of uh, project, I'm, uh, I'm electing the way, um, the vision in which this specific type of idea can be resolved. So yes, I do uh, often use a multidisciplinary approach in which I'm integrating uh, painting techniques or uh, 3D objects, real or uh, digital, within a video so presentation. Are there any specific case or a specific video in which you also use painting inside of the yeah. video? Yeah, for instance, like the video in, that allowed me to, to gain the uh, Video Art Award, in which I've been selected, is called White Time. It's like, or a series of consideration about time-related uh, differences or, or waiting times in between. So the perception of time within different temporalities. Yeah. And uh, voila. And this is actually uh, a mix, a video realized uh, uh, in rotoscopes. So it's a series mm -hmm. of found footages, which uh, later on I, I manipulated within uh, pictorial, uh, pictorial approaches. And uh, it resulted, as, as it says, like it's, it's thought to be like, as it be, you precedentially mentioned about Dali, like a painting in time. Yes. So it's yes. like, it's, a, it's a extend the limit of painting and crossbreeding it with, uh, with elements composing video, uh, video editing in the end, because as well, like, as, as animation started, for instance, uh, it's actually uh, an optical illusion. Like when we talk about frame, when we talk about uh, like time frame, it's a sequence of images that allows this illusion of movement. So playing within the limits that this description implies, we can actually uh, extend or, uh, or cross-breed the final results of, uh, of the represented uh, the representable. Thanks very much, Nicolò, because uh, you, you, you went very deep inside what we had started with, so do the, the, the idea of the avant-garde and all the media and the social media, and today probably it's more actual and on those, and those issues probably are so important that we might find a, a new occasion to speak about those, all those things you say. Thank you very much. Now we go to um, the next, uh, uh, I introduce you the next, um, Salute. thank you very much, uh, Professor Azzoni. Uh, you can speak about what you want now. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my, my English is very, very bad, so sorry. Uh, Sarah, uh, Grains assistant, uh, took uh, instead of me. Okay. Hi, pleased to meet you, everyone. I'm Sarah, I'm the assistant uh, of uh, Grains Arsenali Fotografici. Um, I would like, uh, first of all, uh, thanks uh, Alessandra Di Sarro uh, for asking us to take part in this uh, prestigious panel and uh, uh, also for mentioned before Grand Arsenali Fotografici, uh, 
which uh, uh, artistic directors are Simone Azzoni and Francesca Marra. And uh, thanks for to contribute my views on video art. I would like also to take advantage of this opportunity uh, to underline how, how the found footage technique, which today seems to be the soul of contemporary video creativity, is actually connected to historical avant-garde colleges. Uh, for example, uh, example, Rebecca Moccia and Simone Andrioletti or Luca Coclite, uh, too, uh, two very young artists uh, already acclaimed in the artistic scene, build their own anti-narrativity by sampling iconographic scraps from the web, for example, YouTube. Uh, by dressing them in pop um, colors, Rebecca and Simona aim to translate these traces uh, into iconic uh, reports of what history has left on the web. Uh, Luca Coglite, uh, on the other hand, reminds us how uh, those who represent the landscape today must work above all on perception, and each method of transmitting images can change the relationship and understanding of the landscape. In the world of uh, post-photography, uh, we know that images can be misleading and be subject to processes of formal and sense manipulation. Today, uh, images are metamorphic uh, liquid. Uh, therefore, depending on the tagging and the channel, images can undergo strong superstructures of meaning and change. The artist's responsibility is to try to deconstruct these processes and make them evident. Uh, as George D. D. Huberman claims, images are over-determined objects. Uh, video art, uh, we can see Douglas Gordon, uh, also slips into historicized forms. forms. Uh, all of the images from YouTube or from the news uh, are nothing but containers, uh, full of nothingness, uh, ready to be filled with uh, new consumable nothingness. These collections, these unshaped images, are like ghosts uh, wandering in the air and constantly available for new narratives. They survive far beyond their creator. Although they are still available to anyone, they have lost their purpose. They are the kind of images that Johan von Kuberta calls the ghosts of post-photography. In this context, uh, uh, video uh, confer again order and meaning to imagery uh, by recombining them into a new form of uh, sense. Obviously, in found footage, the distinction between uh, consumption, consum uh, production, and creation is cancelled. Uh, and in found footage, the ready made copy and the original work are obsolete categories. Therefore, if the manipulated material is not referable to anyone, then art is free to use it. Uh, as uh, Johan von Kuberta says, uh, I'm not concerned about the origin of the image, but about its destiny. I'm interested in the reason for which the images are to be used. I'm interested in the artwork. The author is uh, only accessory. The artwork remains, but uh, the author doesn't. The artwork is a collaboration between artist and spectator for the use made of it and not for the meaning suggested by the artist. The artist passes by and the work remains as a collection of disconnected elements ready to be stitched together in a new interpretation. Uh, like Dada and Pop College, found footage rate rates that the author is fundamentally the one who decides and develops a subject but not the one who produces it. Uh, the online dematerialized images merge into post-pop works, uh, such as those uh, of the uh, previously mentioned Andrioletti. If the image, even the photographic image, was born with the promise of documenting and preserving memory, uh, today it has lost the battle against truth and reliability. The memory uh, is all, also dissolving. It is therefore inevitable that continuous decontextualization, as in college, will lead to the loosening of the relationship with the historical drama and the necessity that endanger it. Uh, thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. Now we have a, a last contribution, which is Stefano Mormora, Marmorato, who will get us inside the idea of a international cooperation 
and will tell us about this subject. He's a researcher and developer practitioner, so we will we'll know more about international cooperation through Stefano Marmorado. Thank you. Okay, good evening, uh, everybody. Um, thank you for the invitation, and um, I remain uh, uh, a little doubtful why I, I am actually here, because uh, I come from a very different world. Uh, I work now for the Italian government uh, in Mozambique uh, to, <clears throat> to prepare, uh, uh, negotiate, and then uh, implement uh, uh, big or small uh, programs, uh, uh, development programs, social development programs, infrastructural programs, and, uh, and others. Um, but the reason why, so <clears throat> to this uh, question, I already give uh, the answer. Uh, Alessandra is a, a longtime friend, wanted me to, to say something about these exchanges. Uh, which, uh, which uh, you guys uh, organize and have lived. Um, because uh, when uh, we met uh, in Cape Town uh, um, 15 or 16 years ago, uh, <clears throat> I was doing there uh, just of a, of a job of exchange. So exchanges were my, my daily work. Uh, I was working for a, an international NGO, which was organizing and actually implementing, accompanying and uh, <clears throat> using as a, as a ritual, as a tool, uh, these community-to-community uh, -community exchanges. They were not artistic exchanges, but I will come to that. So uh, I was preaching all the time uh, the power of exchanges uh, uh, for the capacity of uh, changing the minds. Actually, we were um, supporting uh, Indians coming to South Africa and show how they uh, cooperate uh, instead of uh, uh, fighting uh, their uh, authorities when they need a slum upgrading or we need uh, land or some social services. Um, at the time we were even uh, fighting in the beginning of uh, 2000 uh, for having uh, HIV AIDS uh, um, treatment, which uh, as you remember was not uh, easy to get. <clears throat> and uh, so um, for this long experience which I had uh, in uh, promoting and supporting these exchanges and uh, coming to uh, having theories about them, even writing uh, uh, academic papers about uh, the power of exchanges. Uh, uh, they they like me to speak sometimes in this kind of, uh, of a conference uh, to, to say something about the artistic exchange. So I will say just a, a, a few things uh, to contain my intervention in five minutes. Uh, <clears throat> and the first thing is that uh, for, for decades, and not only myself, uh, but uh, the, the whole um, so-called international development, international cooperation uh, for, uh, for uh, eradicating poverty to support social development, social improvement all over the world, especially in the uh, low-income countries. But, uh, we, we have uh, been struggling with uh, a problem. The problem is that uh, development was uh, easy to measure and easy to do uh, and uh, satisfactory for the people donating money when there is a need for extra uh, resources uh, in, in a country like Mozambique, for example, which is one of the 10 uh, poorest in, in the world. So um, what is easy to do? How is it easy to do development? It's easy to do uh, infrastructures. So bridges, roads, new schools, etc. But uh, uh, as uh, we all know, uh, that is not enough to have a real quality of life and real development and real social improvement, uh, equality for women, uh, stopping violence and so on. So uh, what was uh, uh, really difficult to measure and, uh, and uh, difficult to realize because it's intangible is a real improvement in terms of uh, human capital, in terms of uh, culture, national culture, community culture, uh, in a way that it is more inclusive and more uh, tolerant. And, and, and so uh, through cooperation, not because it's a value in itself, not because I am against war, but because cooperation actually uh, brings, uh, uh, brings positive uh, changes in, uh, in development. I mean, it, it, it brings uh, um, working together, it brings uh, results and uh, it brings uh, <clears throat> um, real, uh, real impact uh, that it is desired. So um, in, in, in this, uh, art and culture were progressively seen as a, a not just a tool, because a tool for social intervention, because I think any artist 
here uh, uh, and outside would say, no, uh, we don't want uh, the socialist or fascist uh, vision and perspective of having art as a tool to uh, teach people or to influence people. No, it's not that that the art can do, but uh, the, the existence of art, the expression of uh, the artistic expression and the cultural expression usually uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, a positive uh, element uh, in, uh, in culture, uh, sorry, in a, in, a, in a community, larger or small community, uh, because uh, it uh, allows uh, to open perspectives. It allows to, uh, to see the world. And somebody actually, uh, one of the presentations which uh, showed a, a written text um, had this um, expression, which was uh, question the world through art. No, it was uh, uh, very interesting and showing <clears throat> intuitions and visions and utopias of, uh, of everybody. This uh, per se uh, for, for our work of development is, is very useful. It's actually uh, a tool to, to go ahead and to build solutions when we find, uh, when we find uh, problems. So um, if art and culture uh, per se uh, help appreciate diversity or sometimes for me uh, create a genuine compromise, a genuine commitment uh, for conciliation, for example, so, and um, then, uh, of course, uh, we, we need uh, more and more, or actually we have to enhance uh, powerful tools to, to, to do art better or to have more impact through, through art. Um, even if it's not uh, your interest, it's not your uh, most important uh, uh, interest, but actually for, for us, uh, it's very useful and we appreciate uh, 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 this expression. And uh, um, a lady a few minutes ago said uh, that uh, <clears throat> I'm not interested or was reading. Um, I'm not interested in uh, the origins, but uh, uh, in the destiny no, of the artistic product. Uh, that is very important for us because, because art can actually help people to reinterpret their reality and to, to accept the low, fewer and fewer abuses by uh, the authorities, for example, or they can uh, art can help uh, people to have more better dreams or higher dreams or more ambitions and the demand for quality of life, demand for access to those education facilities that are built or actually uh, be, be access of the roads for uh, commercialization, marketing of, of bad products in agriculture, access the internet. Oh, we have a wonderful internet connection all over the country, but how many people can actually buy one gigabyte per month or five gigabytes, which really allows to enjoy all those nice videos uh, which are on YouTube and so on. So <clears throat> it's, uh, uh, it's very impo important that through art, uh, for us, uh, it's uh, to be appreciated that art helps people, all the people to reinterpret it, to demand more and actually to define better the results that all of the uh, development action that the governments and the supporting agencies uh, are trying to, to take ahead. And so in, in this, uh, in this uh, framework, exchanges are very powerful because uh, I saw some, some uh, editions of um, the Atelisaro Center work and uh, we could easily see art artists like you, it happens to happen to you, we could easily see the, the, the opportunity to, to grow and to, to open uh, one's mind and to improve. Uh, actually, I read in these days, preparing for this small and short intervention, I read a lot of uh, interesting uh, witnesses uh, saying that uh, a simple three month exchange or two weeks uh, exchange had uh, improved so much uh, the creativity and uh, had given the artists new ideas and had uh, been. Um, really inspiring. So if uh, exchanges can do that, uh, we will have more powerful art, more uh, expression. And finally, just the last thing, I just heard um, something which uh, made me uh, think um, that uh, all that you have been doing so far is, is so interesting for me and, and, and I think useful for uh, your country and your communities. And somebody said, don't remember who, so I'm so sorry, uh, that uh, uh, the video, video making videos are one of the uh, uh, forms of artistic expression which uh, helps to um, reach you know, a, a, a wider and wider uh, uh, audience. So uh, this is uh, 
actually important. If, uh, if we need to have more people involved, more people who become citizens, not just citizens when we wanted to toy toy or protest uh, uh, like you, you have a lot in South Africa, we don't have much in Mozambique. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I um, have some South Dadish uh, of, of the toy toys in South Africa because it was, they were lively, but that is not enough. Citizenship means also responsibility and so on. So the more audience, the wider the audience, uh, the better. So more, the more art can actually move people and, and to demand a, a better world for them, uh, the easier will be for all of us development uh, practitioners uh, to do our own. So I, sorry if I was longer than five minutes, but uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Thank you very much, Simo, Stefano Marmorato. Now, if you, any of you would like to make a, a question, we have a Little times once uh, questions questions to anyone. I see here a message. That someone asks for the web page, the uh, the, uh, the um, video art over web page. If you can possibly, I don't have it here, but if anyone can possibly, uh, now it, it's added, so you can. I, find I can it. I can answer to that. Maybe they are waiting for the document of the call, but we have to wait to finish this webinar and then on the same web page of the webinar, we will change the home page and we will put on the call. So just one moment of patience <laughs> that we have to do this changing and... Yeah, Thanks yeah, tomorrow, very much, tomorrow, Alexandra. Will be, tomorrow will be available and uh, we're gonna send an email to everybody notifying that this is available online. And also, we, I, I won't be uh, sorry for, for the problem uh, about the video message uh, of Luca Cocklitter, which would be very interesting for us to, to hear. But we promise that in the recording, um, we will put it entirely. Yeah, so it's it, will, it, will available, it will available in the recording uh, in its full length. Very well, very well. Thank you very much, Alessandra, Simone. We are waiting for, if there are possible uh, questions we can answer or any one of, of us of the participant can answer. We are ready. So you can write something in the chat if you want. And we wait for a few minutes. If not, we can, I think it was a wonderful occasion. We started from the, the origins and then we, we went to the destinies and we realize the fact that the short form of video is shortening distances. I have a short question, may I? Yes, please, yes, of course. Um, there is an expression which I liked uh, and I would like to note down, um, which I, I, whereby I missed the second word. Um, the lady who was speaking before me, I think, or said that the uh, images and videos are today um, manipulable in, in some, some ways, no? And it's not uh, always, uh, they are not representing the, the reality. So she, she used the, the, the expression metamorphic, and then <laughs> there was another word. I would like to hear the second word and note down. Can you say it again, please? Was it okay. Sarah? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, the phrase was, uh, today images are metamorphic liquid. Ah, liquid, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, it was a curiosity. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a, a question also that, that is related to the videos. Uh, is there, uh, the Caroline asks, uh, how long uh, is the time limit for the video? Can anyone ask? Everything will be on Everything. the text of the call. So you it's have on the to wait of the a call. moment well, as we publish the text of the call, but the patient, there is a limit. You know, there is a limit, answer. of course, because video art is normally short format. So there is a limit. You will see. <laughs> okay, so I don't think there are any other questions. Uh, I think that the uh, so we are now done. We've gone through different aspects of video art and um, issues about video art. 
I hope there is a there is a new occasion, maybe a larger occasion for speaking about video because it seems to be a very important issue to talk about. I thank you all, everyone, very much indeed. I thank the Centro di Sarro, Alessandro Atti di Sarro, the ambassador of Pretoria, who was very kind and I think is supporting a very important uh, organization that of the of the, the award and all other participants to the conference through videos and even being present here today. Uh, I think it, it's all. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening and hope to see you again very soon. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.